I've rowed across the Atlantic. That is the finish line! I've raced across the Sahara. I've never been in such pain. And I've survived for a year on a desert island. Mad dogs and Englishmen, eh? Pushing my boundaries has changed my life. Now I'm on a mission to help five people change theirs. I'm Ben Fogel, and this is Extreme Dreams. Across the week, I'll lead a team of would-be explorers on the trip of their lives as they pit themselves against some of the most extreme environments. <laughs> They'll be pushed to their physical limits, and emotions will run high. If my dad, God rest his soul, was alive today, he'd be very proud. For those who rise to the challenge, life will never be the same again. week we're tracking through the high Andes of Peru, a remote and perilous mountain range in South America. Our goal, to reach the amazing lost city of the Incas, Choquiquerao. The route we're taking to get to the lost city is so hazardous, less than 100 people have attempted it in the last century. This week's team, a single mum, Shelley Guilfoyle, who's got high hopes for this trip. I want to see me do stuff I've never done before. I want to see how far I can take myself without me breaking down and screaming, oh my God, what have I done? Call centre worker Francesca Townsend wants to prove she can get on with other people. I know what I like, I know what I don't like, and that's the way I have it. Event manager Mark is a self-confessed control freak. I'm a perfectionist. There you go, I said it, yeah. London-based Mia, who's a full-time mum to her three children. I'm not superwoman, but I do a good impression. <laughs> At 55, Howard from Leeds is the oldest member of the team. I feel that before I get too old, I'd like to see places and see the world and see how the people live. We've been out in the wilderness for almost a week, and we're all starting to find out what we're really made of. Shelley started off badly. A white knuckle ride across a raging river left her nerves in shreds. Don't like none of that. And her fear of heights left her paralysed at the top of a mountain. I'm so scared. But the single mother from London hasn't given up. She's dug deep and battled on. I wouldn't quit because I'm not a quitter. Mia's coped better with the trek, but she struggled to bond with the rest of the team. I don't worry about you, don't worry about me. Yesterday, they turned on her after she risked everyone's safety by breaking away on her own. And how Just the hell would we have found you, to be quite honest? I'll sit there laughing. Francesca's had her own problems to deal with. The least prepared for this trip, she struggled more and more. I can barely breathe. <gasps> and last night, she lost her temper after we were caught out on the mountains after dark. Please stop filming me. I will smash that eight face. Civil servant Mark has become the backbone of the group, helping the others in their times of need. We'll manage, we'll do it. Howard's health and fitness have dogged him throughout the trip. This is a killer. But the proud Yorkshireman has refused to turn back, and his commitment has inspired us all. I wondered how it was worth it just for that. But as the trek gets tougher still, will he, and the rest of us, regret his brave decision to soldier on? It's early morning on day six of our expedition to the Inca ruins of Choquiquerao. We're camped on a remote farm 3,000 feet above sea level. After less than five hours sleep, the team awoken. Last night's long and terrifying trek in the dark have left everyone exhausted and the group's morale has hit rock bottom. Five o'clock in the morning, I'm not excited about anything. I have to have some chocolate. Leave me alone. <laughs> I suppose a little bit anxious about how far we've got to go to get today just because we didn't quite do as much as we were supposed to yesterday, <laughs> so <laughs> God help us. We've been trekking for five days now, and each day Howard's health has been getting worse. Lousy, I've had the runs all night. I've been to the loo about five times. Socks are soaked, every pair's covered in mud. My boots are caked in mud. So, not happy bunny at the moment. I'm just trying to come round. But my stomach's just, everything I eat, it's just going through like water. 
it's time for us to leave the safety of the camp and set off into the wilderness once again. They all seem a lot more nervous today. It's really interesting. It's the first time I've... They've been this quiet, but I think um, four days of trekking is really starting to take its toll. Coming up on the fourth leg of our journey to find the lost city of the Incas. Our route is blocked by a swollen river. If anyone lost their grip there, it's not just a soaking you're going to get. We endure another punishing climb in searing heat to reach our camp before dark. That's what would be the hardest thing ever. Mia falls under the spell of our guide, Pepe. It's like a moment you'd want to last forever. And Howard's health takes another turn for the worse. This is an emergency situation now. It's, the longer we leave it, the, the worse it becomes. Today, we're heading down into the tropical valleys that lie between us and our destination, the lost city of the Incas. Well, finally, the Rio Blanco is in sight, but we've got about another hour of descent. It's getting really hot. You can see the sweat. And the bugs are getting really nasty. Swollen by heavy rain, the Rio Blanco is a roaring torrent that slices through the Andes on its journey to the Amazon. To reach Choquicarao, the team must cross it, but a bridge has been washed away. Pepe has to lead us further upriver in an attempt to find a point safe enough to cross. I'm not quite sure how we're going to do it because I can't quite see how rough it is, but it looks pretty rough. The water is really strong. Be careful. This is a fast flowing river. You literally put your stick into it and, and it was shot out of your hand. When you then put your first foot in, you were very aware of the fact that there was this powerful water and not really much of a slip would have sent you downstream. It is strong! The crossing's a challenge for the whole team, but for Howard, who on dry land is already weak and wobbly on his feet, it's very hazardous indeed. Careful. Hold me, hold me now. Hold me okay, now. now That's good. That was really frightening because there was no room or element for a mistake. You'd have just been swept away. I was a bit worried because um, if anyone lost their gripping there, it's not just a soaking you're going to get. Um, we'd probably end up in Chile. <laughs> not really where we're planning on going to. But it's not over yet because we're now in a little island in the middle of the river and we've got to cross on a, on a kind of plank of wood which I think they're going to find harder, to tell you the truth. They weren't really bridges, they were just kind of a couple of wooden planks that just randomly happened to be there. And they were probably going to break at any time. It really looked like we are going to break. Really slow. All eyes are on Howard. One slip could be fatal. Couldn't have been that long before you hit your head. And you, you, there's no stopping the river. I mean, you would have just been bobbing all the way down to wherever it came out, I would think. Very good. Man, very good. Very, very good. This river is the first fresh, clean water we've seen in days. So, although the facilities may be a little primitive, the opportunity for a proper wash is just too good to miss. Take me to the river. may be warm, but this water's straight off a mountain glacier. Yeah, it was just exhilarating, uh, cold, um, but after that long walk, you know, it was just what the doctor ordered. I just wished I could have stayed in it forever, really. Feel alive! <laughs> the last few days have been incredibly stressful for the whole team, and a brief moment to unwind is just what we all need. Two or three hours we've been walking, feet were killing me, aches, pains, and you go in there and suddenly it, all the worries have gone again. 
It's, it's unbelievable. It's like that all the time. Sadly for Howard, I suspect those worries will be back sooner than he thinks. The temperature's pushing 40 degrees as the team set off on a steep 3,000-foot climb in a bid to reach tonight's camp before darkness falls. As the going gets tough, the group quickly divide between the strong and the weak. I realised at that point that my health was suffering badly and I wasn't getting any better. The energy and the strength was going by the hour. And that was worrying me, A, what I had, and B, how I'm going to get off a mountain that was hundreds of miles from civilization. How, how am I going to do it? As the day wears on, Howard and I are falling further and further behind the rest of the group. And once again, we have to resort to our pack animals as the only way to keep him going. Oh, look at that, Howard. Oh, that is the sight of the most Hola, woman in the world. Bless you. <laughs> well, we didn't reach that donkey a minute too soon. It was quite hairy walking up there with Howard because his balance seems to be going a little bit as well. And there were a few times when he was kind of swaying like that and I was kind of pushing my hand out to stop him literally going over the side. But I think myself and Pepe, we're going to make sure he gets up this mountain whether he likes it or not, we'll carry him between us. We're gonna make, he's not coming this far to not continue. With Howard on his donkey, we can pick up the pace. But the higher we climb, the more humid it gets. It was quite zigzaggy, and every time you got to a corner, I looked up hoping this would be the end of it. It just seemed endless. The plants and the, the flora and fauna and everything were beautiful, but uh, it was really tough. Just look at that view, Francesca. With Howard riding on a pack mule, Francesca is now bringing up the rear and looking more and more exhausted. I thought, well, if I, if I cry and just stop, I'm not going to get back up again. So I just kind of held it back and just thought, I'll just carry on and do it. It was really, really hard. It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Time's harder in the heat. <laughs> oh. Even Mia is struggling now. She still hasn't really bonded with anyone else, but she has taken a shine to one rather unlikely member of the team. Pepe's got a good body for a man for a man of his age, um, and it's um, scarred. You know, I didn't ask him about his scars, but it looks like he's been fighting with a lion or something. <laughs> Humour, maybe. <laughs> they spent a lot of time walking and talking at the front of the group. Um, yeah, Mia fancied the pants off Pepe. I mean, you know, you can't blame her, really. Um, he, was, he was a great guy. He was a really good guy. It's like a moment you'd want to last forever. Yeah, that was a really special moment, that was, yeah. It was um, very emotional. I had to fight back the tears then. Still to come on this leg of our journey to the lost city of the Incas. Shelley makes a phone call home as the pain of being away from her daughter becomes too much for her. This is so much. And Howard's health problems escalate into an emergency and leave the team overcome with distress. Because we're stuck here, the helicopter can't come in. Today's trek has been hard from the off, but for the first time in the entire expedition, the team make camp in daylight. That was really hard. I'm so happy I'm here. I'm going to get some water. It has been so baking hot today, it's not even true. Face feels like it's been burnt. I'm absolutely shattered. And now I'm gonna get soaking wet. <laughs> Great. Even though he was carried up the final thousand feet on a donkey, Howard's too exhausted to even move. I'm now feeling exceptionally weak and very tired. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as soon as the tent's set, I'm, I'm just going to crash out and worry about tomorrow, tomorrow. But I just feel absolutely terrible. It's clear the group could do with a pick-me-up, and I think I've got just what they need. Hi, it's me. Since the trek started, the team have been unable to contact their loved ones. But now we're high enough in the mountains to use our satellite phone. Hello, Mum. Last to make the call is Shelley. Can you hear me? How's Paris? Oh, she's sleeping. Has she been good? Her five-year-old daughter, Paris, is being looked after by Shelley's mum. Has she missed me? Has she said anything about me? Oh! <laughs> I love you. I don't know what to find out, guys. For goodness sake, <laughs> doing this to me. Oh, my God, my daughter keeps asking when I'm coming home. When I heard my mum's voice on the other end, I was, like, so emotional. My mum was like, Shelley! Yeah, and I was like, Mum! And um, I was so excited. I wanted to tell her so much, but I couldn't get it all out. Yeah, and that, that phone call was the best. It was, it was brilliant to hear my mum's voice. And she was so happy. She was like, where are you? I was like, I saw a man inside. Halfway across the world. These are tears of joy. <laughs> <laughs> We're all still a long way from the safety of home and I don't think this land has finished with us yet. While the rest of us enjoy our evening meal, Howard's retreated to his tent. He opened some letters from his family which he brought to Peru to read at a difficult time like this. Hi, Dad. I have no doubt that you're doing very well. I... I'm sorry I can't do it. I do miss them all. <laughs> I just wanted to write a little note to say hi. And if you're ever feeling homesick or tired, then I just wanted to know that all your family and friends are right behind you and won't stop thinking of you. We're all so proud of you for going ahead with this unique trip. If anyone could be a part of this wonderful experience, then you can break a leg. Little does he know. Lots of love, Ollie. He was my eldest boy. It was a very lovely, well-written, caring, thoughtful letter. Perfectly timed on that night because I was all for throwing myself over the mountain and just putting myself out of the misery. But it lifted me. But I just kept thinking of the words that he said in the letter and uh, I've still got the letter at home. It's, it was a magical moment for me, a magical moment. A long day tomorrow. What time's the call? You guys, 5.30. Whilst Pepe and I concentrate on planning tomorrow's track, Mia's thoughts seem to be heading in another direction. You know, you can't choose who you have chemistry with. It just seems to be with me, and um, chemistry's there with um, maybe people that I can't have a future with, you know. I can't live happily ever after with Pepe, you know. <laughs> More than 7,000 miles in between us. I might become his third girlfriend, um, just for a couple of days. I'll let you know, it's not like I've got anyone special at home, you know. Oh, what a day. The team went from dealing with that high altitude and its lack of oxygen to the hot, steamy, tropical jungles down in the valley. And tomorrow, it's the big push to Choki Carao, which will include a sheer 500-metre ascent. The following morning, disaster strikes. Not only has the weather turned against us, but Howard's condition has worsened. Pepe, our guide who has medical training, has been caring for him throughout the night. Very worried. Yeah. And it is so that we're stuck here. We're stuck here. I'm very concerned about Howard. I mean, uh, he's losing too much fluids, and I'm worried about and getting dysentery, and he can't retain anything, anything. He can get into a shock, and then we will have to carry him. Yeah. I mean, it could kill someone here. It could kill someone, and it happened last year. Pepe was saying that it had obviously got really onto his system, and his immune system wasn't effectively coping with it. And we're being told that, you know, he's woken up, um, and he's barely awake. He's just kind of very lethargic, pale, um, and just really, really, really ill. 
we have to get him out of here and there's no way that we can do that right now. Mm -hmm. It's too dangerous to walk over that pass right now. Presumably a helicopter can't come in this weather. No, absolutely not. The situation couldn't be more serious. I go with Pepe to check on Howard. Hi. Just lay there. Lay there stay, lay there. stay there, Howard. Don't move. There's no way I could have moved my head off that pillow. It was almost like I, w I didn't have a... Um, I wasn't shaking or shivering or anything like malaria or anything. Just every bit of energy had gone and I just felt so ill and put just proper poorly, as they say. It was horrible feeling. I'm sorry to stop me for a six, is this? Just, uh, too disgusting to talk on camera. Don't worry, Howard. Oh. If I had been told, right, we're, meet, we're leaving, I would have had to say, well, leave me here to die. And I knew there was something seriously wrong with me. I've never ever experienced a, a feeling of bad health like that in my life. His forehead is hot. Mm -hmm. It's very pale. We all knew how it was ill, but I don't think any of us realised quite how bad it had got. And that morning when he didn't come down, when we saw him, um, I did think he was going to die. I think we all did. We were really, really scared. So, Howard, we're totally on top of things. OK, so the, don't worry yourself. Pepe's going to administer you with anything that we can in the meantime. And we're going to sort out for a helicopter to come, OK? When I saw Pepe's face looking at me, I could tell he was very concerned. And he's a worldly man, a great survivor. And I could see the look on his face. That made me feel even more worried. If he was worried about me, I really am ill. Just, just should I tell you what we're doing anyway, just so you know, I'll fill you in. That basically, the weather's too treacherous for us to go on full stop. That's us, all of us, OK? Yeah. So nothing to do with you, we're staying put, and it's nothing to do with you. How are you feeling now? It's so weak. Yeah, just stay down, don't My bring stomach's it My stomach's just... It's not hurting, but I just can't... I can't control the motion. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just shattered because I haven't slept. Of course. He's right on the limit. He's not, he doesn't have a fever, but he's hot. That is one thing. The other thing is that the smell, it, it, it smells like really sick from a sick person. So, uh, on top, he looks very weak. I mean, he's not a man that can even walk on his own feet to the toilet. We can't take a risk. Adulto de todos, que se llama Howard. In spite of the worsening weather, Pepe puts in a desperate call for an emergency helicopter. But if the clouds don't lift soon, it won't be able to land or perhaps even find us. The helicopter's not around. He, he says that um, the Cusco helicopter, which should be the nearest one, is, is on another rescue mission. And this, you know, this is an emergency situation now. It's getting kind of, the longer we leave it, the, the worse it becomes. And um, I'm really anxious to get him out. And I'm also anxious not to get the rest of the team too worried. And I think there is a, you know, they're really concerned about Howard and themselves. And it's important that everyone stays calm. But obviously the, the longer this goes on and the longer the helicopter takes to arrive, the worse everyone's going to feel. The news about Howard has hit the rest of the group hard. Ben and Pepe obviously know what they're doing. I think they, um, the worst part is that Howard is, is worse. Because we're stuck here, the helicopter can't come in. And that's the only worry I have. We've been speaking to the emergency services and, um, and it looks like the helicopter can't come till tomorrow, um, which isn't great. It's not good news for Howard, who needs urgent medical attention. But in rapidly clearing skies, we spot a totally unexpected visitor. Could this be Howard's ticket off the mountain? We were just sitting in the tent and we heard a helicopter. Now, it's not due to be here till tomorrow, but it's too much of a coincidence that 
a helicopter would be passing around here. But it's disappeared over the brow of the hill. I think I can hear it. Here it comes again, here it comes again, here it comes. So we've got to get, we need something, um, here it is, here it is. Here it, is. it is ours, yeah? It's got to be ours. Okay. We rush towards a clearing that could be used for the helicopter to land. Sorry. We've grabbed as many red things as we can so that we can try and um, show them a, a landing spot because we can't afford to miss this. But by the time we reach the landing site, the helicopter's heading off in the wrong direction. Obviously, we are like a needle in a haystack trying to find us here. Um, the problem is the helicopter's disappeared for the third time. And if it's, if it's missed us, because we it, it's, a, it's a fair old hike to get up here, oh, I'm still out of breath. If it's missed us, that's it. It's going to run out of fuel. I have to go back to Kuske. I have to try again. What we think is it's probably gone to Choki Kadao because um, that's where we were heading. We just gotta hope it comes back now. Time is running out for Howard. We've got to get him out of here. But the helicopter doesn't return. There'll be no evacuation for Howard today. It's not great. Poor Howard, because he'll have, you know, the others down in camp will have probably been dragging him from his tent and getting him all ready and imagine what it must be like someone saying, yay, the helicopter's coming, you can get, get out and get well. And now we've got to go back with the bad news, it's not until tomorrow. You just heard this helicopter go off into the distance. That feeling of kind of utter uselessness and just really, really deflated. His face was drained and he just, he looked about 10 years older and he just like, looked like this little dying man. It was like, Howard, are you in there somewhere? It was horrible. Back at camp, evening draws in on this disastrous day. Howard is still seriously ill and Mia's persuaded the rest of the team to perform a Buddhist chant for his recovery. So, it's all about tomorrow. The skies are beginning to clear and we're praying, even chanting, that the rains don't come again tomorrow, so that not only can the helicopter arrive to evacuate Howard, but that we can get off on the long, long trek to Choki Karao. Tomorrow on Extreme Dreams. With Howard's health in decline, it's a race against time to get him rescued from the mountain. I just wanted to prove that I was fit and strong. I could do it, just prove it to myself. The stress of it all becomes too much for a second member of the team. Oh, we have a big problem with Francesca. She hasn't eaten for days. And she's just, she's not moving. I find it a bit difficult to relate to any of the day. And the rest of us can't believe our eyes as we get close to the lost city of the Incas, Choki Kerao. We finally made us. <laughs> I can't believe he's actually there. <laughs> They're all so excited. It's fantastic. Fantastic.